Hey, hello everybody, this is Andy Jones Wilkins reporting from Silverton, Colorado. Moonlighting with uh, I Run Far this weekend for the Hard Rock 100 and I'm here interviewing Brian Powell, uh, chief uh, editor-in-chief of I Run Far and a contestant in this year's Hard Rock 100. How are you feeling, Brian, going into the race? I'm feeling pretty good, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I understand you and Megan have been uh, living here for the last month or so. How's that been? It's been great. Yeah, I got here... Uh, June 1st or 2nd, and I've uh, been up in Silverton ever since, except for a couple day hiatus to go cover Western states. But uh, yeah, I've loved uh, being up here training and acclimating. So then let's talk a little bit about your year. You uh, it had a big chunk of time in which you were on the road. I think uh, you had your, you had your um, winter and most of the winter in Moab, yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, between say the uh, North Face San Francisco and, but then you were off in Europe for what, a couple of months? Um, I was in Nepal for a month oh, and, Nepal, that's and right. uh, in Europe for a month, but I mean, I guess I've really been on the road now that I think about it at the beginning of the year. I was in Hong Kong and in uh, January, and then went to the outdoor retailer show in Salt Lake, and right. Tarawera, New Zealand, and February, March was Trans Grand Canaria, and yeah, so on and so forth. So that's a lot of that's a lot of frequent flyer miles, <laughs> a lot of miles, a lot of non-running miles. Mostly. Yeah, well, and let's talk a little bit about that because you know you got the word on Hard Rock, yeah. uh, in December, mm -hmm. uh, a surprise to you and Megan, and I think a lot of people, the people that. who heard me screaming on the North Face Fifty course. <laughs> I mean, that, sorry, that, Kim Gaylord, <laughs> <laughs> but that never before uh, been in the race. Uh, lottery is really competitive, and and the things just fell in into place. You had you had gotten a qualifier uh, in the fall before mm -hmm. your, your fall race coverage season at the Bear, and mm -hmm. you ran that hundred with a very different sort of attitude than than I think you're going to run this weekend. But also than some of your past, your other Western states and your Wasatches and so forth. How did the that that Bear qualifier sort of set up this whole season? Oh, it was great. I got to. Uh... All I was doing with the bear was getting a qualifier for Western States and Hard Rock. So right. I had 36 hours to finish, and that's all I needed to do. Yeah. So I went out and pretty undertrained. I got a couple long runs in in the two months before, but not a whole lot of mileage generally. Went out, ran for 75 miles, got to 75 miles, and I wasn't sleepy. I wasn't tired. Nothing was wrong. Sat down. Stopped for six hours, had a five-hour nap, <laughs> got up, and it poured all night. The trails were the muddiest I've ever seen, no exaggeration, and ran to the finish. And so it was <laughs> almost like you did a stage race, a 75-mile yeah, yeah. first stage. And, um, and so so then, then so, so you had that, you, you had that in the bag, you got in via the lottery, you had this travel, and you settled in here to the, the beautiful environs of Silverton, where there was a, a late late season yeah. uh, snows so uh, i i have i think those first couple of weeks here you were you were limited to the to the kind of places you were able to go but how did the you know in, in terms of a training cycle how did it play out from say the beginning of june to when you took off for western states because i know that was a huge chunk of mileage of vertical yeah. of kind of focusing you still were you still were doing iron far stuff but you were really you had that dual focus you were in one place which is amazing <laughs> even, even though it was here yeah. it was one place for a big chunk of time where, where you were just able to absorb yourself in the environment talk a little about that how did you get from that june 1st place to where you are now uh, it took a couple days to settle in i had been in nepal in, in europe for two months so mm -hmm. a couple days to catch up on email the weather was really shitty for a couple days so just got here acclimated to do a couple uh shake out type runs and then i put in two weeks of 28 to 30 hours a piece uh, 100 miles the first week 100 and 20 to second, like mm -hmm. closing in on uh, 35 to 40,000 feet, feet of vert uh, gain yeah. each week. So just getting out there every day, not crushing it, just uh, just hard rock effort, maybe a little harder than hard rock effort every day. And uh, yeah, the first week was I'd go out in the morning most days, and then there's a Anvil Mountain on the north side of town. There's a one mile, 1,500 foot of climb, pretty technical. So I'd run over there for a mile, hike really hard up. Yeah. Uh, run pretty hard down to try to work on my quads a little bit and run back. So, it's, yeah, it was nice to have sort of a, an eating routine. Did it every day for... 
Well, and I got to say too, you and you and I are big fans of peaking and you, while your run up was relatively short by, yeah. you know, you do have a decade and a half at least of ultras on your body. So you can, you can actually do that. I think with, with a certain degree of ease when you're focused on it, but that last week, that week that took you up to the, uh, I, I think you headed out to Western States Monday or Tuesday before uh, the race, Tuesday, yeah. but the week that ended on Sunday, and I want to talk about that final workout, which <laughs> just, I mean, I think if there's if if if, if when all said and done I, I if, if you were to look back on monday morning after the race and i'd like to, but looking at that week I, I i remember reading your reports on it. it was more vert than you'd ever done more miles than you'd ever done you had gotten yourself down to a fighting weight that was uh, as as light as you've been in your ultra career maybe even as close as you might have been to college yeah. uh you know cross country weight and so forth so i mean that week really was was kind of the pinnacle of this cycle. Wasn't yeah, it? And it, it Walk was, me through that week a little bit. I mean, I don't remember the details of runs, but it was a, just a great week. I felt I'd just come off a, a huge week for me and, right. and felt great and was really monitoring myself on a daily basis, make sure I wasn't overdoing it. I took a day off during the week. Mm -hmm. I technically had seven runs that week, but one was uh, my birthday was that Monday and I went out in the morning and did a good, a decent run. And then just did my four miles up Anvil in the evening. So, and then the solo nine hour four times up and down Kendall Mountain. Yeah. What What was that? I just kind of wanted, there were some people doing runs other places and I just knew I wanted to get a really long run in that day with a lot of vert. I sort of jammed my foot um, a couple days earlier and was just taking it easy with that. So I didn't want a super technical trail. Yeah, so there's a, yeah. a dirt road, with, but it's not smooth dirt road. I mean like, yeah. it, you work. Um, yeah, so I just kept going up that. I got to have a little aid station at the bottom, just parked my car right at the bottom of the mountain had a jug of water. It was a hot day, hot, hot day for here. And that's, and that's 2000 plus each time I, up or it, from where, where I was going up to, I was going up to the turn off, um, to the peak where there's still a lot of snow, snow up high, uh -huh. very high. Um, so it was about 2,800 feet per lap. So you're talking about 10,000 plus. I added a little bit. So it was, it was totally at, uh, over 12, 12,000 plus. So a third of the hard yeah, rock mileage. Yeah. In in the end, I kind of did that. Yeah. The, yeah. That's pretty cool. It That's was, pretty And you finished that. You kind of dusted yourself off I, and you're like, okay. And I, like, I could have kept going that day. It was just like, all right, it's five o'clock. I want to go get a pizza. Yeah. So, so thinking about the race, uh, you know, you and I are big, uh, in addition to being fans of peakers, we do uh, take seriously our mentors. And, you know, Scotty Mills is here, and I know you've probably been out with him a couple of times and soaked up some some advice from him. I also know that you've spent some time with Billy Simpson. Yeah. And yeah. if I, I mean, you've been talking a little bit about keeping an eye on Billy's splits. He's a multiple-time finisher. And yeah. so those guys and, and a couple of the others, how are you, as a first-time hard rocker but not first time you know you've paced here before and you've run you know a bunch of hundreds how are you you know calibrating your own sort of here's what i want to do today with you know the advice and counsel of kind of the the council of elders <laughs> that are here well, those are two, two very different things i mean in terms of like yeah i'm absorbing every bit of knowledge i can i mean there's the, the people you've named and there's just lots of people at this campground that i've been at at, at avalanche cafe at, you know just in town that i've soak up every bit of knowledge I can. I sent out an email to a bunch of hard rockers uh, from the past and just got where they've made mistakes, what advice they'd give, and just this race, having observed it so many times, is so unlike any other hundred I've been to. And it's the altitude plays such a part. It is rugged and wild and, uh, and remote from time. So I really want to respect the race as much and see where the people who've done it before, where they respect the course the most. Right. And then there's calibrating my own plan mm -hmm. um which is I, I think very different in that i want to all along i my goal is to finish mm -hmm. i would mm -hmm. i love hard rock having been here so many times i love hard rock i want to be back at hard rock sometime so my first goal is is to finish this time mm -hmm. i want to know the course know what it's like to run for 30 hours because i mean the bear doesn't really count because i was just Mm -hmm. messing around right um right. i had a bad wasp that's where i blew up to a, like a 28 and change but I want to know what a steady effort at 30 hours feels yeah. like and what I can maintain. And I'd rather do that from the going from the conservative side and then let more out later. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, to go out too hard and just suffer my way to the end because I don't think I'll learn as much about what I can do here. Right. So so are you doing the classic, at least in this year's counterclockwise direction, are you breaking it into the four 
classic chunks? Are you I'm thinking a, a three, bit maybe more? two, three and maybe two chunks? I mean, all since I got into hard rock and it, I've just been repeating myself: thirty hour shape, thirty five hour pace. And I know I mm -hmm. probably won't be able to go out that slow. I don't think I'll be able to rein myself in that slow. But I have Billy Simpson's thirty three fourteen splits mm -hmm. from uh, two years ago, same direction. He ran. He ran what thirty three fourteen, so he was sixteen thirty seven to U Ray. Right. That is right. exactly on the nose half the time at U Ray. It's yeah. fifty six miles, but so that would be that would be uh, uh, if we saw that if we saw you in sixteen and change at U Ray, we'd know you're doing you're executing your plan. Especially if I, that if that's in line where I am at. Yeah. at and I and I gotta say one, and I've only run the race once, uh, you know, but it's, it was in this direction. That section going into Pole Creek has a has a tendency to just naturally slow you down. You're high for the longest period of time. It's kind of meadowy. It's a, it's a little bit of a grind. You you know you can you can stay controlled up there and have some nice legs for what is a glorious descent into your a, and yeah. then you begin the you know the roads and the the rest of that. And one thing I've done very I'm a big fan of specificity in training mm, yeah. and especially I was my, it was actually two different components for the first couple months that I was really training for hard rock. It was just about fitness. I didn't care about vertical. I didn't care about that. Since I've got here, I walk every uphill. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's a southern western states. I would shoot myself if I was walking it. But it's such high elevation and such a long time up at high elevation. I walk all of it, and I hope to do that through stuff like Pole Creek. Like that's something I Absolutely. really want to do. And if I can run one of the later climbs, like maybe if I mix something in at Camp Bird, if I'm still really fresh at between Ure and Telluride, I might do that. But I mean, I really want to approach it conservatively, definitely to Ure, maybe work a little harder if I have something in between mm -hmm. there and Telluride, but I'd really like to be conservative. I'd rather be at Telluride and think to myself, if anybody's within an hour ahead of me, I'm there, gonna beat you, you might get, you might reel like, them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd much rather have, it's more fun that way. And it, really, my approach is to maximize my fun during yeah. this race. Like, And I think that, that sounds cheesy or weak or something, I don't know. Like just having seen people suffer the whole way from the front of the pack to the back of the pack. It's just not the productive right. way to get well, this and, done. And I've seen, I mean, we ran a little bit out in Squaw Valley and I, you are, you're, you have focused on the hiking and you know, you were in that, just that little six K run, you were hiking past people who were running, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> I mean, you've got your hiking legs ready to rock. Mm -hmm. How about your downhills? Have you, I mean, obviously Kendall the other day, you know, uh, you've been, you quads are seasoned up and ready to I go. I can't make my quad sore. You can't make them sore, yeah. And that's yeah. been the, that way all year. When I did Hong Kong 100K, which I think is 16,000 feet of vert in, in January, like off the couch, I couldn't make my quad sore. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's something that I'm pretty, it's, it's a strength of mine. Yeah, The strong yeah. quads, and I might be regretting saying that, but it's something I've worked <laughs> on for years and I know how to, to season them. And I've tried my best. I mean, there was the Kendall Mountain, which was 36 miles and 12,000 feet of descent. But I also did a less than 20 mile run with 19,000. Really? I mean, with, uh, 19 miles with uh, 10,000 feet plus. Wow. And, and it, yeah, like on the So these the babies course, are ready. They yeah. are uh... <laughs> as ready as they can be. Like, yeah. I, I mean, unless yeah. I went out and did a, a 50 mile race on a crazy course. Like, yeah. And there really wasn't an opportunity to do that here in training. The passes were all snowed in and closed. And it just would have been. Right. Miserable right. trudges that weren't going to be there f during the race. And I just thought that was wasted energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as you know, uh, are things, I mean, I know things have melted out real quickly. Are things uh, going to be, I mean, there'll be the, your usual snow the patches usual in American and Basin it. and so forth. Wasatch but, Basin, American Basin after Handy's, uh -huh. Wasatch going up to Oscars Pass. Right. Right. Um, yeah. The Virginia's climb will have some snow. And then other than that, just, just little regular little patches. patches you have to go across. Yeah, yeah, I mean Putnam. We went up a couple of days ago, and Putnam's clear. I Is mean, it a couple of little patches? The Cornice, uh, the first little pass there, but yeah. uh, the snow is not. I mean, it'll be annoying at times. When yeah. you're tired and it's the middle of the day, and you, or the middle of the second day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll be hating the snow in Wasatch Basin. But and so let's talk a little bit about what you've got uh, set up first for crew and pacers. I think, you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, your sister's coming out. My sister's out here. She and she she's crewed you before. She's, right? she's crewed me my first Western States with my parents, and then she's uh -huh. crewed me at Leadville and Wasatch by herself or with, with a friend. But awesome. yeah, so she's a veteran crew person. She knows what she's doing. Um, She's now an ultra runner. She wasn't the other time she screwed me. She that's ran right. the, you the Laurel Highlands 50K yeah, that's last right. year. That's right. So she's kind of got back on the running kick a little bit. And she's psyched to be out here because she's 
she knows of you. I don't, I don't think you two have ever met. She it's like to meet Bill Duper and then some of the the stars all. Yeah, time, yeah, so. it'll be fun to meet her finally. Yeah, yeah. so she's there, and then um, my my the first pacer I'll pick up just got set up yesterday. Hillary Allen on the, the North Face team. She's okay. gonna pace me from Ure or from uh, Grouse Gulch to Ure. Nice. And then I got Good. my buddy uh, Vince Hyde um, from Park City. He's gonna. And he's paced you before. No, you no, he's he never hasn't paced, paced, paced you before. No, nope. yeah. so it's just it'll be a fun experience. Uh, yeah. He's a he's a character and a, a chatter, so he'll be a good one to bring me up Camp Bird Road. And, and I think you have some music in reserve just in case you get into the tunnel. Uh. <laughs> oh, I mean, I really I had a couple a couple good realizations in training. One of them was one day we were running from town up to Os, uh, to Ofer Pass Road and up to Ofer Pass, and just. An hour in, I was totally bonky. I found out a friend had died the day before, and mm. so I don't know if it was emotional or energy or what, but I was just, I was on zero mm. an hour in, and I just popped two gels and put on some music and was singing to myself or dancing, whatever I could do. Uh, like that great. externalization of positivity, it makes a difference if yeah, you can smile. Absolutely. And I've seen it in tons of the people winning the best races in the world in this past year and really watching them. The people who are smiling and laughing and oh, dancing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 that almost leads to the good performance. It's not the good performance that makes them smile. Yeah, I um, agree. I think a positive attitude, optimism, hope, it's, it, it'll get you, especially since so much like of you can You can have, there's time for grit, but yeah. in a race like Hard Rock, there's a lot of time for balloons and yep. streamers yep. And, <laughs> and some dance music. <laughs> exactly. And I found in training, especially when I had my, my jammed foot, I didn't listen to music or anything downhill because I was trying to be really careful and I think mm -hmm. I'll stick to that. But I also found podcasts or books on tape like just some really long hiking climbs yeah, just yeah more than music which could get me too excited like just listen to freakonomics podcast or, or whatever cool. just like That's cool and go hike up the mountain for 90 minutes and i know you know this is iron far and uh i we are, you have so many fans out there we want to we want to know what you got going for gear uh, uh <laughs> gear. so let's start uh you're gonna have a pack i am and uh, i am not what, a i and I don't not, like you haven't long you haven't long used a pack. I mean, I you're don't, a handheld guy. I'm a, a handheld guy. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's mostly because where guy. you've seen me. And that's at Western States mm -hmm, right. or at Leadville, where it tends to, it only is 80, but it feels really hot. Right. And I don't like a vest because it traps heat, but it's going to be a relatively mild temperatures. And, right. I, and I wear them in training when right. it's cooler temperatures. I don't mind the fit of the vest. Um, so with the cooler temps, I'll probably go with a, a vest all day. I'll probably go with the UD Ultimate Direction um, Scott Jurek vest yeah. probably all day. And it just means uh, one setup. I was thinking of starting with a bottle or starting with a jerk pack, but I'm trying to simplify. So I two, came up with a two liter bladder. No, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I I sort of set aside Saturday to make a plan because I'm oh, so okay. busy with work as well. Yeah. yeah. And I made a plan, and now the I keep simplifying it every day. Okay. It's kind of like taking moving parts out. So one pack, um, one bottle, no bladder. I've finally come to peace with the bottle boob. I really wasn't a fan of so first. So you got a single it. a single boob. Single boob. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> And I really wasn't a fan of that at first, but I've, I've come to get used to it. And I'm really, I preach about being safe with water and, yeah. and filtering everything and treating everything. But weight at hard rock, carrying an extra liter, an extra 2.2 pounds, yeah. or an extra two liters, 4.4 pounds up a huge mountain at high elevation. I don't want to do it. So well, I'm going to dip. You, you've been around this course. There's water everywhere. There's water everywhere. I mean, the longest section is at uh, up and over Handy's and American bases, and it's just flooded with water. So yeah. you so can dip in there. I'm going to dip, uh, and I have one UD kicker valve bottle, which is a bottle I've used forever. And then I also have a Solomon soft flask that I'll roll up and put in my pack. Done. So if I know there's a long stretch coming up with that water, I'll fill both up. Fill them both like up. Like go, yeah. going up Handy's, I'll have both. Right. And then, or call. if I... I'm in a spot where I accidentally miss and have a, a go dry for half an hour. The next stream I come right. to, fill up both, and then carry on. That's and I cool. have 40 ounces of water. So, yeah. and then um, you got a jacket. You're going to throw a jacket in there. What, um, what are you using? On and off, I, I have two that are in the mix right now. Um, the North Face Featherlight jacket. Um, okay. It's been in, on and off the market in the U.S. It's super light. Um, I wouldn't if it's going to pour for seven hours. I probably won't use that one. I'm going to. My bomber jacket at the moment is a North Face Stormy Trail jacket, okay. and it'll take whatever comes. So. And your usual shorts? Uh, yeah, at the moment, the usual shorts are New Balance. Uh, I don't even know what might make they are. I, I'm a, I just like, I come from a running background. I like the split shorts. Yeah. Trail yep. shorts that are long and hangy, just 
I can't do. Yeah. yeah. Um, they just feel comfortable on me. So. And then down on your feet, what do you got for socks? Socks, it's going to be dry max. Uh, <laughs> This is the one area. Do you know where... which which Drymax? <laughs> you haven't decided yet, <laughs> Bob. He hasn't decided yet. <laughs> uh, I, I usually wear the Max Pros uh, for stuff for long hard stuff, uh, but with all the water on the course, I do wear the the hot weather socks a lot for racing. Uh -huh. um, just especially where there's a lot of stream crossings, just to not soak up as much water and not get mm -hmm. as it's a little bit for the weight of just water being absorbed in the shoe and the sock, but it's also for drying out. Yeah. And, and trying to prevent that maceration. Um, Which is a factor here. <laughs> I've almost thought about going with their hyper thin. I haven't run much in them, mm. but just having no water be, you know, sort of held in the socks. It socks. basically just goes I mean, through them. And yeah. the problem with, like, at a race like Western States, you can get your feet wet and then you, they're going to dry out. Yeah. Because you have time in between. This is going to be, it's nothing's going to, my feet are never going to dry out completely. Yeah. So it's just a matter of can I clear that water from my shoe. Right. Um, and then the shoe. I know no. everybody's dying to know, uh, or, or or maybe shoes. I don't know. They are You've literally been known to wear one on each foot. At I have time. tested. I have tested. <laughs> or certainly one. insoles have been uh, interchangeable. But uh, I mean, where I, are I you? I mean, like, still, we still have three days, so yeah. It, it will depend change. a little bit on the water um, situation. How, yeah. much, how much it's going to rain during the race. But I have like seven shoes that I'll choose from. <laughs> um, and part of that is I have four shoes kind of in the same category that i really like the the somewhat lightweight but well lugged n not minimalist at all but like yeah. well lugged not uber heavy kind of shoes like um new balance i'm gonna say too much about it. the new balance has a vasey summit coming mm -hmm. out which is sort of their 110 v3 i don't know if they want me to say yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of the continuation of that line but it's heavily lugged and breathable um the north face ultra mt the New Balance 110 V2 and Solomon Fell Race. So they're all kind of right. similar shoes. So heavily lugged, lightish. Yeah. And uh, I like them all. Feel and the trail. It's kind of just whatever I pull on the money. Right yeah. now, it'd probably be the Vasey Summit, but we'll see on race day. Yeah. Um, the the big variables are I have a pair of Hoka Speed Goat. I'm not really used to the height because I haven't run in them a ton mm -hmm. on any Hokas for the technical descents. But I have them in case I really... They have great traction and they're great mm -hmm. on wet rock with the new... Um, the Vibram, um, I'm forgetting the name. Yeah, the, the new Vibram mm -hmm. grip uh, outsole um, is great. I have Solomon S Lab ST wing soft grounds, which are just mm -hmm. sort of more of it, the 12 ounce versus the 10 ounce. Mm -hmm. A little more structure, um, good drop for me. I like more drop. Mm -hmm. um, and then my New Balance 1400 V3. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I love my road racing shoes. Exactly. Uh, you can't exactly. Six well, with, I guess uh, with seven to choose from, I run far listeners. We're, I'll just have to have my camera ready on race you morning can, to, to document it once and for all. But those uh, those, those road racers are most likely to come out at say. Tell you right. <laughs> and I do I do slip uh, from the ultras. The uh, they have a removable insole in their uh, superior shoe. And I've cut them off behind the metatarsals, and I just slip that in my road shoes because I do do want a little more rock yeah. protection. And that combination. I used for 75 miles at the bear. Yeah. There is something nice about throwing a new pair of shoes on, going this direction at Telluride. Yeah. And as a guy who I've changed shoes exactly once in any of my hundreds, and it was here, and just putting that nice really? new so cushiony you... shoe on. I at the it was 2009. I put on you won't believe it an Asics Gel Cumulus, but it felt like a Hoka at the time. And that's so. one thing I have to do. I mean, like I want to. I'm not aiming for time, but. If I can minimize eight station time, I'll call you. Just so to actually, if I have to take a nap at Telluride, I have the time. Or if I have to take a nap and then walk every step in, I have the time. So well, and as you, I don't want to give time up. Absolutely, and time. as you've observed, being around the race so many times, covering it, you know, there are some solid veteran 30, 31, 32, 33 hour runners who really make good use of the aid station time. They They've were, got a crew ready to go, you know, and they're just walking out and they're eating and they're doing their thing. And I remember there were 11 people to have less than an hour of aid station time last yeah. year and it was the top 10 and Scotty Mills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we never really finished up on my goal. Yes. So it's to finish. I would, wouldn't mind finishing under 39 hours, not for a time reason. That's second sundown. Uh, and yeah. That would so be, you would you wouldn't have to pull a uh, headlamp out for a second. That just it'd be yeah. nice. Oh, <laughs> by the way, you going with uh? What, what, are you going with the Petzl now? Petzl now. Or, you, yeah. The second version is yeah, super yeah, yeah. bright. I the mean, batteries that's are an amazing. Great. Amazing. I'll probably yeah. as much that's super bright, but I still am a fan of having one light low, and either carrying a little handheld or putting a 
a simple uh, headlamp around my waist to get more depth perception mm -hmm. on the rocks. Are you going to program it for nine hours or are you going to bring a second battery? I'll uh, program it for 10, 10, just a little over 10, 10 hours something. to be safe. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll, have a, I'll have a battery if I need it for a second night. Yeah. 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 Uh, so 39. And then. Uh, so finish, not having to go into a second sunrise. And then there really is no time goal above that. I mean, like I have Billy Simpson's 33-14 yeah. splits, more of to try to be conservative earlier. And after that, we'll see. I mean, I have seen enough people run this course and trained with enough people beforehand. I'm in, I'm in 30 hour shape, 30, 30 and change or a little under 30. I have no right. idea what it is, but I feel that fit. Yeah. Um, but that's yeah. not the goal. I'd rather. And like, there's so many variables too, with, you know, what, what happens with weather, the weather. I mean, thunder, you and I have talked, I mean, I know thunderstorms, I don't mess with lightning. You don't mess with lightning. You know, if it happens, it happens. But if you have to scrub an hour at an aid station because so be of uh, waiting something out, that's going to, you know, it's an extra couple of grilled cheese and you're good. Yeah. You know? I know. Uh, I know how to make use of that time. That was an awesome thing. It, when I took the, uh, the excuse me, the bear nap right. last fall is I ate a ton of food right. and, and then slept. But I'd say I would do the same thing if I get shut out or nade station, or I will actually have a couple hundred extra calories if I have to take cover. That you'll just course. be carrying with you. I'll take pack. an extra yeah. 400 calories and I will sit and I will eat 400 calories and they will be digesting while I'm sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's not wasting that time. Yeah. And drinking and doing whatever I can to. to so, so, so this is, I mean, it's been it's been a couple of years since you've come into a hundred with the kind of focus and the eye For of the sure. tiger and the drive and the, I mean, how's it feel to kind of be you know, to be back in the game? I mean, awesome. I, I I I I mean, how's it? You're you know you're you're like back in the game. If, I mean, 2014 was a great year for you, you know, business wise mm. and all that, but not necessarily you know out here and now no. here you are. And I regretted how's it, last it feel? Year. I regretted it last Did year. Did you? Like, not having uh, a focus race, not having, yeah. and for me, a focus race, it really helps it if it, if it's one of those special races that prominent races, I don't know what you, what you want to call it. Mm. It's a marathon to Saab, a Western States, a Leadville, a UTMB, a hard rock. Um, and I missed that last mm -hmm. year because it, I, it probably seems like I'm on vacation all the time, but I pretty much work all the time, right. and, even right. when I'm in cool places. So if I don't have something that I have to, you know, I really want to train for, I end up just working right. all the time. And I did that last year and having hard rock, I mean, I go work for a week at a race and run 15 miles if I'm lucky mm -hmm. for a week and then train hundred miles a week, but it got me those hundred mile weeks. Yeah. And so having that on the calendar was awesome. And having re not ha regretted not having it on the calendar last year, I signed up for comrades marathon mm -hmm. to know that I would have a race that I could look forward to. And I put in for Western and hard rock and I got in hard rock. So uh, it ended up working out there. And, and you stayed, you stayed free of the injury bug. No. Uh, you, you know, you jammed your foot. Yeah. That was, that was just more of a, 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 a slight thing. thing yeah. And I just babied it for a couple of days. Cause there's no reason not to. And so, I mean, even though your job is all consuming and you could do nothing but that, yes. you know, and be plenty busy and still not have time to, you know, one of the things I observed as your friend, literally from the time you were picked in the lottery through now is your per your sense of purpose. You always have a sense of purpose about what what Iron Far yeah, is about. Yeah. But every you know, and I don't mean like you're obsessed with hard rock because no. you've been doing all this other. But just a general sense of purpose. It has has just been imbued in every conversation we've mm -hmm. had, email exchanges, even the content. If you if you're a subtle observer, even some of the content in Iron Far these last six months has been very purposeful and very very I mean very thoughtful, and it comes from the mind of a guy who's focused on something and i mean and, and if ultra running does give us something it's a it's a sense of purpose and accomplishment it is and, and you know it's and, great to have that back yeah, yeah, yeah. and I mean, it makes me want to have it every year going forward i yeah. mean long after i run fars often doing its own thing <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i'm often doing my own thing. uh i mean i want to be doing this kind of stuff or even if it's not Maybe someday I'm not able to race anymore. I mean, to have that focus on some sort of hiking trip or whatever, like right. just having that purpose of, of getting out there. And I mean, I, you know, I ran all through last year, just not much and not with a purpose. And right. that was great. But having that, that little spark behind, and I mean, it, there wasn't much in the, in the winter. I was really busy with work, even up until like mid-March, just working a ton and, mm -hmm. and didn't get to work. But as soon as like middle of March came around, 
it was like time to put the head down. And, right. And it, it felt awesome. Like getting, getting the fitness back, it came really quick. I basically fell into a, a couple straight hundred mile weeks starting in Moab and then up in Leadville and just mm-hmm. had amazing training up there. Um, I had some, a little, uh, downtime with travel and then went to Nepal and had right. some huge weeks there, including some racing at the Mustang trail race, which was an amazing spirit. Yeah. It was a shorter racing, but racing up high and just sprinting yeah. it 10 miles at 13,000 feet. Jeez. And then, yeah. uh, so two weeks there. And then, I mean, I've run 700 mile weeks this year yeah. and I'd run three hundred mile weeks in training the rest of my life. Like, and you know what? You seem to have been able to compartmentalize the distractions too. I mean, you're always going to have I run far on the, on your mind. Yeah. You're always going to have your travel on the mind. You're always going to, but you seem to be, you know, like, especially coming here, you were able to just be like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Pretty much. I'm going up Anvil. Fuck 40. it. I'm yeah. doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going out and I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, and, and that, you know, being able, what we, it, it, you know, the best ultra runners, they can turn it on and turn it off. If, if it's, if you're on all the time, you're going to burn out. You're going to be fried. You're going to be, you know, you've already had a long ultra career and you're going to have a lot longer one. And and this is one of the real ways to do it. And I think what all so many of the I Run Far readers are, are so excited about going into this weekend for you is that this is, you know, your chance to, to really not only give back the way you do it with I Run Far, but give back as a participant <laughs> on the course. You know, like you said to me at the end of Western States last year, couldn't you give back better on the course? And what you're going to do on Friday and for some of the day on Saturday is give back. <laughs> hopefully you know, not just, on Sunday. No, no, hopefully not on Sunday. <laughs> but in the day is, you know, give back in that other way. Yeah. And and I think that's going to be It'll be fun because I know a lot of people are psyched to see me on the course. And it's hopefully have lots of good interactions. And Yeah. I mean, I yeah. Aside from kissing the rock, is there a part of the race? So you got to ask the part of the race question. Is there a part of the race that you're really looking forward to? You know, I know you haven't seen every inch of the course, but you've seen a, a whole lot yeah. of it, and you've paced here, and you've been, you know, well, well, is there a place that you know when you when you start out and you're rolling, you know, you're like, God, I'm looking forward to, you know. Well, part of that is I specifically kept sections of the course I've never run before. Mm-hmm. I've not run from here to Little Giant. So you I've haven't not, run the first I've ten, not, yeah. I've not run the Pole Creek section over to Sherman. Mm-hmm. I've not done top of Putnam to Mineral Creek. So all those sections There's some rocks really, there, careful. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And I'm probably the only one to say this. I'm really looking forward to the descent off Oscars. Are you really? <laughs> I've only done that fresh, but I love that descent. It is like the most heinous oh my god it's like the fred flintstone wilderness it's boulders and but i kind of want to like <laughs> i think for me it's a good reminder or it's a good thing for me to keep my mind early in the race is i want to be able to run that yeah and not not crush it not not destroy running down but it's so technical if i can run that upper part Oh, those last 20 miles. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. That's actually pretty cool to look forward to that. Because I could see if you were fresh, if your feet were together. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it just, and it's not just that, that mental aspect. The view yeah. from Oscar's passing <laughs> over stunning. Grant Swamp. Yeah. It's one of the best views in the course, so. And yeah. disheartening to know you got to get there. <laughs> I don't, it's funny because I've, I've done all these climbs and there's none that really individually i mean the, the whole totality of hard rock freaks the shit out of me right but uh the totality like any any hill itself like there's nothing that really oh that's so hard that's so whatever like yeah doing this anvil climb i've done it so many times that anything on the course there's nothing steep nothing that steeper long. nothing mm-hmm. yeah yeah. grindier than that and there's nothing more technical for a long descent there's nothing now one of the things i've often thought about especially working with young athletes is knowing the difference between you know, like anxiety or nervousness and fear yeah. how are you doing i mean this is an overwhelming event for just about everybody even the 10 timers it's it's huge it's different any every time there are some parts that are genuinely you, one can be scared about. Yes. Um, how are you? How are you mitigating your nervousness? For, I mean, no, health, nervousness is healthy. Yeah. Fear can be debilitating. How are you? Well, working? on that spectrum, like yeah, anxiety, and I deal with anxiety in my life. Mm-hmm. Like it's something I have a problem with and try to deal with, and it's not here. There's none right now. It's not on the work front, which I could be right now because I've got a ton of work to do and right. with the race coming up and all like just my personal like last minute preparation and resting and whatnot 
but that's not there. I'm not anxious about getting on the line. I'm not anxious about getting around. And I do find myself more anxious for shorter races. Like if I was doing right. the Jupiter Peak steeplechase in Park City in the beginning of August, like I'm nervous before that. I don't get anxious before a hundred mile or anymore. Like that's great because it's so there's so much time. And if I fuck up the first seven hours, who cares? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to fear in that. Um, I do have fear for some parts of the course. Um, yeah. I was really fearful of uh, little giant dives uh, for a while, but that snow has melted. It was this when it was there, really there's a couple snowy, hundred meters come, on this yeah. like pyramid face, and it looked really sketchy. But that's melted out, and I'm, okay. yeah. I'm I've not been there, but I'm okay with that. Um, Virginia, I don't Bear Creek, I don't mind. There's you don't a lot mind of exposure. That, the exposure. No, because you're running out of trail, and that's yeah. fine. I don't think I mind Virginia too much because it's you're facing a wall, and same with Grant Swamp Pass. It's they're kind of a pain in the ass to get over. Yeah. Um, there was one place that I'm, I'm totally blanking on right now that I, I was thinking about the fear about it, but, oh, I think right after Virginia, so you do a little side the, hill section. Where it's, it's a real off camber. With slidey shit. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that kind of stuff that I don't mind going up a steep face. I don't like traversing a steep face. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I, at first, when I came to pace at Hard Rock in 2005, I was fearful of Bear Creek. Yeah. And then I got there, and I'm pacing somebody, and you, you, you just do it. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll have the same attitude during yeah. during Hard Rock. And I'm not fearful of the stomach. I mean, I, you learn through mistakes. And, like, I got sick at Western States two years ago, and I don't regret <laughs> dropping. Um, I mean, I would have loved it to have one more toward my 10-year buckle, but right. um, I was in a pretty shitty place. But I also learned that you get sick, and I've done enough runs since on zero calories of super long time that I, sh I probably could have kept going with no calories, right. especially at a hard rock type thing. You just keep walking. Um, right. So I'm not going to let that bother me. You know, it was, it was persistent puking nausea. It wasn't but like you said, too, with if I screw up seven hours, you got so much time, you could you could stop and eat a, a cheesesteak. I could uh, go to Uray, like, go in the hot springs, go into town. And get a couple, you know, vegan well, quesadillas. Uh, and then come back and go. I mean, I can yeah. do that in Telluride, too. I mean, like, there's that much time. And that's. And you have been good uh, uh, about nutrition and the solid food and knowing when you kind of have to hit reset and so forth. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with fueling. I mean, I got I've been sick at very few races in my right. life. Um, right. it, was a hot, it wasn't a terribly hot year at Western States, but it was a hot year. and I, It was a little too much on the sodium front um, and sort of diagnosing it after the fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I kind of got that figured out. I've sort of been a low sodium guy for a long time, and it works for me. Yeah. I mean, I'll have some, some S caps to pop if I need it, and then I'll have some, some sports drink with a little bit of electro. Yeah, but I would imagine at this race, you can really just base it. You're not going to, you'll be sweating and you'll get, there'll be warm spots, but it's not going to be like that relentless thing. You no, know, that's why I don't mind going with a 20 ounce bottle for most yeah. races. I mean, yeah. Western states, I'm, I'm carrying two bottles no matter yeah. what. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, well, Brian, I got to say on behalf of all the I Run Far team and everybody out there in I Run Far land, we are really looking forward to an awesome you race. You know what I'm looking forward and to? An awesome experience. And now my bonus question. Okay, what's that? All right. One of the things you've done in this run up that I could never do, <laughs> that I could never do, is you've given up beer. Since June 1st. All right. And so the bonus question is, because I'll take, I'll take this on myself, what beer do you want me to hand deliver to you when you kiss that rock? Well, it's going to have to be after champagne. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm going to have champagne. My, uh, a reporter from France, Christophe Rocher, died uh -huh. this uh, just a couple weeks ago. I remember hearing um, that. Yeah, very tragic. And a guy I'd only met in person a couple times, but a, a really great dude. And uh, just want to have a little, sort of a little... A toast to him. Yeah, especially I, haven't, I have not drank since he passed away. So I'd like to, you know, raise mm -hmm. a glass to Christophe. But uh, mm -hmm. after that... I don't suppose you have a 395 IPA in your car. You? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. No, but I might try and track one and if down. If you can't, uh, a plenty wouldn't be bad either. But, uh, there's lots of good beer here, and it's. I think it's IPA season. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it'll have to be an IPA. Even the Modus Hopperane from down in uh, Scott Brewing in Durango. I hope to get down there. Uh, if not Sunday, Monday after yeah. the race. Well, not like I'm making any predictions or anything, but I think I might get a good lunch IPA. 
Shit. <laughs> Let's call it a late lunch, buddy. <laughs> late lunch. All right, late lunch it is. <laughs>